The world economy is irreparable, okay? There's no fix, right? The structure has collapsed. It's like 9-11, okay? You're not gonna, re you're not gonna pick up the pieces of and rebuild sure. the Twin Towers from the shit that just fell down. It's dust. Right. Just dust, just dust. It's in a cloud of dust. There's not going to, not coming back. So the global economy is becoming vaporized, essentially. So, A, they'll continue to print money and throw it at the problem and hope it works. We know that the reason that it got to be a problem to begin with is by printing too much money. And that and it got, didn't go into the places where it should have gone. It went into the pockets of the people printing the money right. through the Cantillon effect. So that's what, but at the prices, that's probably what will happen. And it means that you go into a much more aggressive inflationary environment. And there'll be a lot more people going broke and homeless because the cost of food will be beyond the reach of just about anybody. The second scenario would be a deflationary collapse. So this would be that they're going to cut the money printing. And this is the more responsible scenario. We've done it once before, and I'll, and I'll mention why and how in a second. But it would be to default on our debt. The economy in the, it would immediately crash 98%. It would have an immediate fucking disaster. But you could build out of that. You could, you could recover within, like Iceland, you know, when they got hit with the 2008 financial crisis, they actually went after the banks. They arrested the bankers and they defaulted essentially on all their debts. And the economy went to zero effectively. And they rebuilt it from scratch and now they're doing they're doing fine. Okay, this is a much smaller economy and it's in Iceland. It's not the United States of America. It's not a $334 trillion economy. But nevertheless, the responsible thing to do at this point would be to cop to the fact that this debt that we sell is not worth the, what we say it's worth and we need to default on it. The only actual way to survive as intact as a country is to do that. But, you know, that's, that's not going to happen. The global economy teeters on the brink of a looming catastrophe, poised to strike within months. Recent events, such as the collapse of fiat currency systems in countries like Argentina and Lebanon, serve as ominous harbingers. Alarming inflation rates in the U.S. underscore the severity of the impending crisis. Renowned economic commentator Max Kaiser issues a stark warning, highlighting the unsustainable trajectory of U.S. economic policy. Mounting interest on national debt surpasses even military expenditures, indicating a perilous imbalance. Kaiser condemns the failures of trickle-down economics, attributing them to rampant money printing and misguided investments. He paints a grim picture of trillions vanishing into a financial abyss controlled by powerful accounting firms. Anticipating a seismic shift towards a Bitcoin standard, Kaiser predicts a wave of bank failures driven by insolvency and dubious accounting practices. Notably, he observes a growing discourse among political figures, including presidential candidates, regarding Bitcoin as a potential remedy. In a sobering conclusion, Kaiser hints at the specter of another world war, underscoring the urgency of the situation. Ever feel like you're wasting your money on things that don't really matter? Stop. You don't have time. Don't miss out on this 2025 bull run. Educate yourself now. Don't spend $12.50 on junk. Educate yourself on how to be successful in crypto using our crypto cheat guide. Unlock the secrets of crypto and make smarter investments today. Visit the website now and the link in the description for your exclusive copy. Start your journey to crypto success today. Please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to drop your comment and observations in the comment section below. Thanks and enjoy the video. Speaking of the environment, to change gears here for a second, I saw something interesting that people in Europe, there's a huge movement now. They want to repair the um, pipeline that they blew up because of inflation, because of energy costs. So, okay, so the economics is real. Like, it's it's not like something that is a theory. It's It's real. If you cut off the supply of your gas and you have to bring it from the United States and send it over water, if your purchasing power of your fiat money is going down and then it's going to be even more for it. Mm -hmm. So that's that was known before you blew this up. Before you blew up the pipeline, we knew that if you blow it up, you're going to be paying a lot more for your energy. And of course, people are saying, I don't care. I don't care if I pay more for energy. I'm on principle. I'm going to be blowing up this pipeline. Okay, so you blew up the pipeline. Now, two years later, energy is doubled and you can't afford food. There is no practical solutions to repair the damage to the global economy at this point. One is hyperinflationary collapse or one is a deflationary collapse, which would mean that 
if the hyperinflationary collapse, I think, is easier to understand. So the government simply keep printing more money to throw at the problem, but not in a managed way. I remember they tried to stop the Gulf oil spill with golf balls. You know, remember that whole episode? Like I was just spewing for how many weeks that go yeah, on and yeah. they're like down there with golf balls or like band-aids like eventually <laughs> they figured something it's, out it's a 40 dollar nut or bolt they could have not yeah, of course. it's like 9 11 of course you know they could have put 50 dollar locks on the cabins on the pilots cabin every jet should have had a lock yeah. to the cabin i mean it's just a, it's because some lunatic is might hijack the plane but of course that would have cost 50 dollars per plane you know that could add up Graham, you might be spending like a million dollars on oh, locks, no. wow. right? That was an oversight, obvious oversight, cost cutting there. That led to that freaking tragedy that could have been avoided with some common sense. Like we want to help our customers, not put them in, in grave risk. Now, did they learn anything? No, they decided at Boeing to cut back. Yeah. So now the planes are falling out of the sky like there's a 9-11 every day. You know, because they, they, the lesson they learned from 9-11 was spend less. You see, when, when Russia invaded Ukraine, it started, it changed that, you know, I've talked about this before. So the 40 year bull market and the bond market ended and inflation genie was out of the bottle. I mean, the reason we have inflation right now in large part because of Russia invading Ukraine, Russia is the biggest commodity producer in the world. And their pricing discovery for commodities, for oil, gas, is it's a uh, world reserve recurrency is the dollar and the dollar is really controlled on wall street and also wall street gets a commission on all those dollars that circulate in the global economy and it's a huge money spinner for the united states but once russia invaded ukraine they said you know what we're going to price the commodities ourselves we don't need you anymore we're going we're to get out of the dollar which everyone is getting out of the dollar the bricks are getting out of the dollar so that means that there's no buffer for the United States. They're going to be paying the full price for oil, gas, food, commodities. So I think commodity markets in the beginning of an extended multi-year bull market and commodity prices are going to be going up dramatically, which is, of course, it's a bedrock driver of inflation. So steel, iron, gold, silver, cocoa, Wheat. Wheat, right? Pork bellies, yeah. right? Food, agriculture, the soft, the hard, all commodities, cotton, right? It just all is going to go double or triple. We get other countries to buy our debt so that we can buy their goods cheaper. It collapses because they won't be buying our debt anymore. So we have to go to the open market and buy the stuff on the open market. And the open market price for gas could be $20 a gallon. Wheat could be triple what the current price is. So the countries with the commodities like Russia, they're insulated because they're swapping commodities for that shit. Their global trading currencies are commodities, not dollars. They're not going to be hurt the way the U.S. would be hurt because the U.S. has no manufacturing, competitively beating us. So like the TikTok ban is stupid because it's oh. actually owned by a lot of Americans on TikTok stock. It's a publicly traded stock. I mean, Rand Paul did a very nice little video on this, like who actually owns TikTok. It's not a Chinese company. You cannot, by definition, call it a Chinese company based on who owns actually owns that company. The problem is that they're out competing American social media companies like Facebook and others. I mean, as we saw during COVID that they had a complete lock on all media, pretty much. TikTok has emerged as a breakaway social media platform that they don't control the narrative. And um, so they are going after it for those reasons. But they put her under the rubric of China threat, which is, you know, stupid because they could be stumbling into a world war, right? I mean, Russia is basically saying that, look, I mean, if... France sends troops to NATO, to Ukraine, NATO starts putting boots on the ground and starts shooting at us. We're, it's called World War III. And we've been more ready for it. We've been planning for it. The short-term gain from the defense contractors is obvious, right? They get to make a big payday. And um, so that's capitalism run amok, right? That's capitalism brought us this mess, capital extremism. Here's Max Kaiser, shedding light on the precarious state of the global economy. His stark warnings regarding the risks of hyperinflation and deflationary pressures underscore the imperative to address underlying issues promptly. In essence, Kaiser's analysis serves as a wake-up call, 
urging policymakers and individuals to proactively address looming economic threats. Only by tackling systemic weaknesses head-on and embracing innovative solutions can we navigate through these uncertain times with resilience and adaptability. For more Daily Dose Crypto News, check out these two awesome videos on your screen. Click now and we will see you on the next video.